too late. Marco's just turning on a light, but we're here. Hello. And I don't know if his soundboard is going to work because I've got streamer, but here's Marco. <laughs> Marco. <laughs> we're here. It, it worked. It, it's it was pretty. It was not that loud, but it was okay. Uh, so, all right. Oh, what can what can I do? Yeah. <laughs> thank you for trying here. Yeah. What's so up, thank everybody? you so much, Marco. Thank you so much for being on here. Um, I'm going to just shout out some people that are on here, and I know that your people watching here are very excited about your upcoming Primerica video that's going uh -huh. to drop. And I've seen both versions of it, and I love both of them. Thank you. Especially thank you. The second one that you did, I agree, it is more powerful. Hell yeah. 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 So hello, Janet, to... Davon, Monica, Monica, Kendra K, Sweet Goth, Kirsten, and there are some of your people on here. Maybe you want to say hi to. <laughs> Ni hao, everybody. Ni hao. Uh, all right. So what we're going to do um, tonight is I found this video and I asked Marco if he'd be like, you know, if he'd be open to looking at this, if not, no big deal. And he was open. <laughs> he agreed. So this is a Bravenly Global video. And this is a newer MLM. The CEO used to be an ItWorks representative. Mm. And then she ended up working at corporate ItWorks. And then she opened up another multi-level marketing company called Emrys. But this has disappeared from her LinkedIn profile. She doesn't want to talk about this. And then she's launched Bravenly Global. And the reason why I wanted to sh uh, get Marco's reaction to this and to show you guys this is because this is like the nuts and bolts everyday indoctrination that you see in multi-level marketing. And I think you'll be really surprised at the red flags that happen just in like casual conversation. I can't wait. All right. I can't wait. <laughs> Everybody thumbs up the ting. <laughs> I just want to hear Obama and then the air horns. Yeah, let me do it. Let me do it. Let me do it. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I can get here. Okay, tell me if y'all can hear this. Obama. <laughs> I had to hold the mic right up to it, but it worked. It worked really it worked. well. There you go. Okay, let's do it. All right, let's, all right. Let's, let's get on this here. So, okay. so what's the product of this company? What do they sell? Powdered. Kool-Aid, even a representative referred to it as Kool-Aid. It helps uh, weight loss and appetite suppressants and gives you lots of energy, helps you sleep. But it's various bags of different colored powders. Well, you know I love to get the bag, so let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm enjoying okay. this company. <laughs> yeah, Bravenly Global. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Let's show it's up powerfully. Start off yeah, show up powerfully. Show up strong. Um, it starts off kind of slow, but it's it's worth it, I think. So this is a 36-minute video. That full right. screen. <laughs> okay, just wait. <laughs> is that? Woo, is that, that was good. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> just one second. It's preparing. Yeah, this is much better than trying to go live and share and all of that. <laughs> okay. Kristen and Aspen. Kristen and Aspen, and I believe that uh, Aspen is the CEO, and uh, this woman has left another multi-level marketing company, and I really hope that she gets out because I see, like, uh, when I first came across this video, I'm like, holy shit, like, the cross, the trophy in the background, the kindness, and it's, she's branded herself, there's a bag, there's, she's, yeah, she's yeah. dropped her own bag behind her. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this, this lady definitely has a sign in her kitchen that says, gather, Live, love, laugh, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let me come find you again. Okay. Okay, we should be good. Let me just double check on my... Yeah, okay. absolutely. We are good to go. All right. Good morning, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> good morning. We're kind of giggling. We're dealing with just chaos in my house right now. <laughs> but it is Memorial Weekend. It's Friday, and I don't know about a bunch of you guys, but it is our first official day of summer break, and it's like this kind of like excitement, but also like sheer terror of what's to come for the next the next <laughs> few months. Um, but I'm so excited to be able to do this live today and introduce so many people to our owner and CEO of Bravenly Global, you guys. Aspen is literally such a diamond and such a jewel and is 
been such a breath of fresh air for myself to be able to be a Write What's this up? down. I'm telling the chat, write this down. Oh, she's yeah. a diamond, she's a jewel, and she's a breath of fresh air. <laughs> write that down. Part of her company and the legacy that she is building right now. Um, I'm just going to introduce myself really quickly. I know that a lot of people on my page that are on my Facebook page, they know my story, but I know we have a lot of people tuning in today. Um, so just a little bit about myself. Uh, See, always with the story. And this is like this is just a normal zoom training and i put in the description it's kind of preparing people for this is that even when it's a bonus training like this that we would take notes and everything always starts with your story it's not just from the stage it's every fucking time there's any training this is like everyday stuff we're always taught to tell our story yeah there's a when i was researching i am academy one of the leaders in the company had a post that said Whoever tells the story the best wins. You'll notice that there are these terms that are universal across multi-level marketing, regardless of what company. Your the story. They know they're when you say the story, they're referring to your story and the plan. It's every company you could say the plan, and they would know exactly what you're talking about. Why? Because every plan is the same in every MLM. So uh, also the business is another term. You you know if you worked at Pizza Hut. You, you never would hear people at Pizza Hut or any business saying the business. They would say Pizza Hut. Yeah. And so there's this sort of like shrouded in mystery, vague terms, way of doing things um, that you're 100% correct uh, in pointing out. Uh, another thing, too, I don't know if this stands out to anybody. This woman is named Kristen Manassi, and it says on the Zoom ID on the corner there, the only time I've ever seen that last name, Manassian, is in connection with Alex Manassian, uh, the gentleman from, I shouldn't say the gentleman, the, the man from Toronto who a few years ago uh, rented a moving van and drove it down a busy populated street and killed several people uh, in the name of the uh, incel movement that he was a part of online. And I'm Googling to try to find out if this woman is perhaps related to him or married to someone related to him. And I think if that, if it does turn out to be the case, that'd be very interesting that both of them were involved in uh, cults, one, one more radical than the other, of course, it seems, but yeah, I wonder. Holy shit. Um, Car uh, Carrie Anna, I just, oops, sorry, Marco. Um, <laughs> I click, I click around. Sometimes I click right off. <laughs> Uh, Carrie Anna had said, like, who gives a shit about everyone's stories? Honestly, it's it's true. But in multi-level marketing, we're coached to do this, to always lead with your story. And it has to be before you are not confident you were um, a, a horrible person. <laughs> yeah. You have many friends. You were so negative and judgmental. And this company has changed everything because it's about selling that the business, selling the opportunity. So even outside of this, it's like, who gives a shit? But in this, this makes so much sense to us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, imagine going to your job. You're going to go start a new job. And the manager at McDonald's is like, let me just tell you a little bit about me before we get into this. We're going to learn about fries and burgers and all that great stuff that you came here for. But the real, the real essence of this is that you have to understand that before this business, before this company changed my life and put me in whatever, whatever, and on we go. I mean, you, you have seen this enough times that you could probably freestyle the entire thing make make it up off the top of your head so you know. <laughs> um i am a happily married mama we've been together for 20 years we have two redhead blue-eyed kiddos which is less than one percent of the entire world which is crazy that we have two of them um i was a special education teacher i taught just like aspen she was a teacher as well i taught for 10 years but I kind of fell into this industry, really looking to kind of make a little extra income. I think we all agree that teachers don't make nearly enough money. And I was looking for an extra way to bring in income. It's like that, I think we can all agree that that's one of their tactics that they do. And then it's like teachers. So the going. Oh, we, did we lose Julie? <laughs> did I lose you? you? You froze. Did I? Oh no, am I back? Yeah, we, you froze. You said, okay, going. You said going. Start from there. I would, I don't, oh, they go for women um, and faith. 
they're always talking about God. God is mm -hmm. calling you to bravely. This uh, company is different. And they're also going for teachers. So I thought I wanted to just, I want to point every fucking thing out. Yeah. I also doesn't. wonder. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I'm saying I was frozen. Like, oh, Shit. <laughs> that's okay. I, I also wonder if um, her bringing up the statistic of her baby having blonde hair and blue eyes being a less than one percenter is foreshadowing the less than one percent of people who make money in multi-level marketing as some means of she, she's sort of disarming us in advance i wonder if you know if she's going to make some analogy later on saying well my baby is in the one percent of babies that had blonde hair and blue eyes is that a scam <laughs> <laughs> that's a new one <laughs> yeah no kidding so we got the aryan race pyramid scheme coming up uh, and what else? There was another thing I was going to point out too. Oh yeah. Just what you said about faith. Like, you know, I, I say in the, in the extended cut of this new, uh, video that's coming out, it's out now on Patreon, if you're on my Patreon or, uh, memberships, but in this new video, in the extended version, I explain in depth how, like, if you already live in faith in some aspect of your life. Maybe you're involved in a church community or maybe you're in some other cult already. Maybe you're a QAnon person or a Scientology person. You're more likely to be convinced of something in the name of faith because you're already used to operating from faith in some element of your life. So I think that's why you see so many people who are you know, living a faith-based life uh, get sucked into MLM and it's sort of like a uh, a pipeline that goes that goes both ways. You know, you could be recruited from your church to going into an MLM or a cult and vice versa. You could be recruited from your MLM into believing something more radical like you guys are going to see in this video that I'm putting out. Daniel Alonzo, this gentleman who's been in Primerica a long, long time. And he's talking about frequencies. If you feel sick, if you have a headache, don't take an Advil. Listen to some frequencies. And uh I left it out of the video just to be nice to YouTube, but he's posted a lot of stuff about like being anti-vax and being uh, questioning the establishment and like more, you could tell under the surface that like he's, he's into some radical ways of thinking. Um, and I have to imagine that MLM has, has played a part in that. Yeah, if you guys haven't um, aren't a part of his Patreon, oh my God, get in there because those the videos are so good. I cannot wait for them to be released. I'm oh, thank be you. I'm, I'm expecting. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to enjoy this weekend, and then by Monday, I'm expecting a lawsuit. So I'm enjoying this final weekend. Yeah, of... <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Like Glenn was saying, um, MLM is fraud saying everybody needs to share this video because I just was starting to watch part of your live reaction last night to Fraser Brooks. And I'm like, I'm going to be doing my part to be sharing that video too. So. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you, Julie. You got it. And it became much bigger than that for our family. I, I was able to step away actually six years ago yesterday is when I packed up my classroom for the last time and I got to come home and really just be present with my family and create my own schedule, create all of that for our family. Um, I then had was with another company. I've had a tremendous success in this industry. And I was kind of in this limbo area, though, of kind of not knowing if I wanted to stick around anymore in this industry. And I'm just really honest with my story. Um, I remember last summer I sat down and I wrote a pros and cons list of what I loved about this industry and what I was struggling with. And and I, I thought, you know, I'm just going to start my own business. And so last summer, I spent the summer creating my own marketing business for social media, thought that that was what I was going to do. But the Lord kept calling me to this industry. He was like, you're not done yet. You're not done. This just makes me sick. And, you know, I'm starting to work on a video about Bravenly Global. And this is going to be my first kind of project where it's like, a longer video where I'm putting time in. And I, as I was like looking around on Facebook, I found this, all these Plexus reps left on June 1st. So I'm calling it the great Plexidus. And I've been like putting nice. shit up. Yeah. And I even have like this little, like with, I use clip champ for my editing mm -hmm. and I have like this, like, ch -ch -ch -ch, like this film thing. And I'm like with the oh, typewriter, nice. like the great Plexus. That's and I'm awesome. going to show all these screenshots. And it was like all these people, June 1st, 
they're like, after after a lot of thought, after a lot of prayer and discernment, I've decided to leave Plexus. I've decided to leave Plexus. And it goes for that whole week of June, that first week of June. And I still see them actually coming up. I don't know if she was from like within Plexus, but I thought it was really interesting how she started her own business. And now she's like using God. God called me back to this industry. Right. See how it's so fucking deceptive. Like this is what you're on the stage. <laughs> This is just a casual little Zoom call. Like you could see your friend sitting there on their computer and you don't know that they're listening to this shit. And it's. I know. Yeah. I also want to. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, I, I just got the new one. He just sent me it actually. I, you got it? Ah! Yeah, there you go. <laughs> nice. Have you read it yet? I haven't read it yet. I just got it. No, I'm just going through Ponzionomics yeah. again. So, yeah. <laughs> I got it. Um, I also want to point out the lady. Uh, Kristen here in her in her talk thus far, she's utilizing two different logical fallacies in one. So if you know about the the logical fallacy called appeal to authority, this is when you say um, basically this is the, the effect of having a lab coat on and standing at the front of the room is people assume that you know what you're talking about. Uh, I think it's the um, remind me that experiment, the Milgram experiment, where there's one person sitting in a room. And they're hooked up to a machine that if they get the answer wrong, it's like a memory recall test. And if they get the answer wrong, they're shocked. And the person in the other room is told by someone in a white lab coat to keep increasing the voltage. And it gets to the point where they, you know, uh, deliver a voltage that would be fatal. And then they go past that because the person in the lab coat told them to. Uh, so she's combining that with who's the biggest authority, God. And it's also the appeal to faith fallacy where it says, okay, X, X is true. And if you have faith, you will see that basically is, is how that goes. So uh, blank is true. And the way to solve for blank is use faith. So she's combining both the unfalsifiable uh, authority of God. Who are you to question him? Certainly not, you know, you're not, you don't know more than God. You're saying you know more than God. So uh very uh very powerful she's showing up very powerfully here yes she is and you know it's funny that you say that because um there is a tie-in with ray higdon with these he he actually interviewed aspen emery and he has rebranded his rank makers live event which was like rank makers version of monations you know money mm. uh, annual event and and it's because of the exposure from the anti-mlm movement and he has rebranded it to faith over fear. And these guys have been using faith over fear. So there's like this weird, creepy link going on there. FOF, baby. <laughs> FOF forever. Lifer. <laughs> um, and for some reason, I, I was. Obama. <laughs> yeah, we got to get that in. <laughs> Thinking about this a minute ago, Bravenly kept popping up in my head. But guys, I, it, that's all the Lord because. I didn't know anyone in Bravenly. I don't know how I really knew of Bravenly at the time. It was the algorithm. <laughs> so wait, she just heard, she just thought of the name Bravenly out of nowhere and never heard of heard of it from anywhere. It just God gave her the word. God, she's laying there in bed and God comes out. He's like, Bravenly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Insane. <sighs> time um i knew of someone who was in the company so i just kept hearing the lord say you're not done and i sent literally sent a friend request to someone i didn't know and i said i need to know what is this why why am i being called to bravenly and once i got to kind of see what aspen was doing here know that she was like me like she saw those cons list that i was seeing too and she said i'm going to create something and it's going to be magical and it's going to be exactly what this industry should be and I'm going to create my own MLM because I was a failed It Works representative. And then I worked for corporate and I thought, fuck, the money is in making MLM. I like how she said she <laughs> knew one person who was in Bravenly. And then she's like, I added somebody I didn't even know. So did you know or did you not know them? That's right. Get the story <laughs> straight. And that, that weird, um, it kept, God kept calling me to this. It's like saying, anytime you see this, you need to interpret it as a sign that you need to be here. It's so messed up. Of it's course. linking God with the algorithm, like social media. It's bizarre. Anything bad that happens to you is the devil and anything good that happens to you is God. So yeah, it's, it's bravenly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> and it has been so amazing. Wait, I'm gonna wait. Wait, okay, go. I was I don't have the Jeopardy music. I was going to play like a little interlude, but I'm not as quick on the draw. I was just adjusting my uh, camera focus so that I'm actually more in focus. Okay. Amazing to partner with Aspen and a company that truly, truly sees the beauty of what this industry does and does this with integrity and is making a huge, huge impact. And guys, like what is happening here bravely is it's crazy. I saw I think we're at like 27,000 now in the official Bravely Breakthrough page. And I think I joined, which was eight months ago, and it was at 10,000. I mean, that is how fast we're growing. It's, an, it's insane what's happening here. And so I am excited just to welcome Aspen. She is the one with the vision and the mind and the business mindset and the grit and all of it that is created what we're doing. Here. This company too, I'm sorry, I'm pausing it so much. No, nah, go ahead. I have a lot to say is that they're relatively new. And since um, I left and started to self-educate, unpack what I've been a part of, this is what these companies do. They do that, that pop and drop. So they have mm -hmm. this massive growth yep. where I'm like, it's just everybody's signing up. And when I saw that great plexidus going on, these, these <laughs> top leaders that were reached out to by Aspen saying, um, they some of them posted... Jeff Bezos never contacted me to sign up for Amazon. Um, then they named the leader of It Works, never contacted me to sign up with It Works. But Aspen Emery contacted me personally to sign up with Bravenly. Who wouldn't want to join this company? Join my team. I'm like, that is an unfair playing field. She's so she's there, and all these people have, have the exact same copy and paste post. Yeah, it's funny. I mean. I, it's amazing that I'm still not tired of seeing the same thing copy and pasted and regurgitated by a new person because there's different sort of there's different little spins on it. Like, you know, the white ladies named Kristen and Aspen will have their own little version. And uh, compared to like some, you know, Hispanic dude or a black dude, they have a different version. And each time they appeal to the people that look like them and the struggles that they might stereotypically have. With I Am Academy, when I was studying them, it was mostly black people that were targeted to join the company. So their, their go-to phrase was break generational curses. Well, that's not so subtly referring to slavery, uh, you know, a whole host of other, you know, racism, a host of other disadvantages that black people have had. And when you hear white ladies do, do their pitch, it's often like, I was married to a, my husband was making six figures, but I just, you know, was lacking purpose. <laughs> That's exactly it. rich husbands. That's why. And I noticed too, when uh, she had said, I six years ago, I was able to stay at home. It's like, you didn't mention exactly how, because a lot of this is funded by cool. their partners. Yeah. You already won ladies. If you, if you already have a rich husband who can afford to, that, you don't have to work. That's a miracle in today's economy that you don't have to have both incomes working. Wow. You already won. Leave the MLM on in the DM. Leave it alone. You don't need it. Yeah. Here at Bravenly. And it's just, man, it's been such an honor, such an honor to be here. And so I typed up a few questions just so that we could like stay and make sure I pull out those key points because you just bring such an incredible energy to this, to this industry. And, and I think we are all so blessed. The energy is like a wet balloon that has had that was blown up and then it had all the air like evacuate from it just pfft, that's what the energy is like it's so fucking weird seeing this now because i would have been like i would have been taking notes <laughs> i would have thought this was amazing already i mean what would, what could you even write down from this honestly i would have yeah i know i threw out a lot of my notes when i woke up i wish i hadn't <laughs> kept them now um but i have had one <laughs> I, I had one rank maker send me a, like a big box of her journals and I haven't gone through them all yet, but I think, um, cause I was so embarrassed and I was like, I want it out. But some of the stuff I'd write down would be, um, God called her to this. Mm. I would, I'd be writing down verbatim what she said. It would, there would be no critical thinking. It would just be writing as quickly down keywords. Man, for the amount of MLM gurus that have spoken to God directly. I just know there's some starving kid in Africa who's like trying to get in touch with God by any means. And God's like, sorry, I'm over here with Chris Johnson right now. He's a top one percenter in fucking whatever MLM. We got to work out. We have to, I'm helping him take massive action right now. 
Uh, I'm calling uh, Kristen right now to let her know. Go do go to Bravenly. Yeah. Bravenly. <laughs> <laughs> Insane. <laughs> for what you're doing here. And we're so grateful. I know that my team is always like, we found the unicorn company. We have even in our team thread, it's a unicorn because we call it the unicorn company. Um, so I'm going to see where, where do you think they get that from? Like tell Robert Fitzpatrick, the unicorn company actually exists in Ravenly. <laughs> it's not a, it's a legitimate MLM. They're all the most, every MLM is the most revolutionary. Every MLM is the uh, disruptor in their industry. Every MLM is the Amazon, the Uber, the Airbnb of whatever the product is that they're selling. Every one of them can say to you, we have the best compensation plan in the industry. What other opportunity is going to pay you X, X, Y, and Z? And they all say the exact same thing, which is why it's so stunning that people get recruited into multiple MLMs in your case, you were only in one, but imagine being disillusioned by one and then just going to another one. It's really uh, something. Ask you, Aston, because I know a lot of people like they don't know, like, and, and I truly believe that the, the people at the top are the ones who are going to create the entire culture of the field. And that's truly what is happening here. But just kind of rewind a little bit. Can you walk us through the journey of where you are when you first started in network marketing and how it has taken you to where you are today in this industry? Absolutely. Well, thanks for having me. It's awesome. Anytime that I get to connect with our top leaders in this company and of course share with their audiences. Uh, my husband and I, I have been in this industry. I just had to, this cracked me up. So I was like looking at this, I'm like, oh my God, she's drinking from a branded mug. And it was just so well-timed. I would have oh, done yeah. that too. I've been like, <laughs> it looks like a Herbalife uh, logo on her, on, on her water bottle there. Yeah. <laughs> We've also been married a long time, just like you were at, we're almost at 23 years. We've got five kids, former school teacher. So I've got a lot in common there, but have been in this industry for over 17 years. And I started in the field first. And that gives Bravenly even just that unique edge and that unique feel of being field first founders who have really uh, field first. That's another one too. field first founders, faith over fear, field first founders, prospect, put it in your pipeline. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing at the, the chat right now. Mark Richardson says, Marco, I have a gun for you. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate your trying to equip me with protection. And Taz says, Marco, I have a particle beam cannon for you. Hit me up after stream. Yes, I need both those. I need both those. Thank you, guys. Yeah, we should read some of the comments here. I, my apologies to everyone watching this in the chat. I'm kind of um, all over the place. Um, Don't apologize when God called you to ignore the chat. It's true. Actually, I'm like obeying the new cult leader here, which is so uh, gracious to um, attend <laughs> this Zoom, yeah, this, so this stream yard. <laughs> so true. I'll just read a couple of comments here. Lanya says, hi, everyone. Wanted to say I hate it when Amazon uses religious manipulation to make me buy their products. And so true. Janet, thank you so much for being on here, Janet. Carrie Ann is like, God did. <laughs> yeah. Where's, the, where's, where's my God did sound effect here? Let's see if it's all right. It's all about. Oh, no, that's not it. I have two DJ Khaled sound effects, actually. I have the residual income one and this one. God did. God did. Somebody had requested residual income too. Oh, you, you want the residual income? Yes. Yeah. It's all about residual income. There you go. Wouldn't it be awesome if somebody was saying that in this Zoom call, like just to mix it up? <laughs> They're gonna. Also, I love that about these two women is that you could swap Aspen for anyone else that Kristen had done a Zoom with, and you could swap Kristen with anyone Aspen had done a Zoom with, and I'm sure they'd be saying the exact same thing. It's like they don't actually talk. One talks, the other waits for their turn to talk. There's no actual exchanging of ideas here. It's you give your intro, I give my intro, and they're just following the, the exact formula, the plan. They've actually learned nothing about each other uh, except you know, for this surface level, could be made up, could be embellished, could be real you know, story that they've already no doubt heard from each other before. It's just a performance that they're doing for the audience in the Zoom. It is just a game. And uh, I think that's why they're called Hun Bots, right? Because it's so formulaic. It's so predictable. It's like an AI wrote it because yeah. it, it basically it did. Yeah. 
uh, embraced and come to understand what it looks like to be out in the field, the ones sharing the message, doing the marketing and all of that. And so 17 years ago, that's exactly where I started. I had a why, just like many of the people that we all know in this industry. I wanted something more, something better for our life. I wanted to be a mom that could say yes. And we loved the idea of saving for retirement and saving. I think that's like a thought stopping cliche. I wanted to be a mom that could say yes. What does that mean? It's so ambiguous. It's just one of those other things that are just nestled in there. Totally. For the extras and having multiple streams of income and, and all of those things. And we're so grateful, but over the last 17 years, it's been quite a journey through the ups and downs of this industry. And just like, you're really honest about how you felt about it. I am also that same way. We've been through the highest of highs and the highest of ranks and income levels, as well as the lowest of lows, watching a company that we loved and were top leaders in go out of business. And it's just served to remind us more and more of how important it is to know what you're looking for when you're looking for a company. And for us, we weren't finding a company that we aligned with in all areas. We found lots of great products. I love some network marketing products from other companies that I, I want to know what happened with this Emrys. Like she opened it up. I, I wasn't doing like a, a lot of research. It's so easy. You just type in like her name on Facebook and all these posts come up. Right. And it's not that long ago. I mean, it was only like 2019, I think when she, she had started this Emrys. So, and it's, purposefully removed from her LinkedIn profile. So I don't know what, and I, from what I've pieced together, and I also read like behind MLM a little bit, like they just, they just don't talk about it. I don't know what happened, but I saw somebody else had commented on the great Plexidus, one of the people that had left. They said, what happened to Emrys? Yeah, there's something going on there. Just mentioning. <laughs> yeah. I still use and Every now and again, we'd see kind of a cool comp plan or we'd, you know, see owners of a certain company that, oh, wow, they seem like great people. We just weren't really seeing all of it. You know, the timing, the positioning, something that's fresh and current and relevant with great, you know, we just weren't seeing all the, as some people say, boxes checked or pieces of the puzzle put together. We weren't finding it. And honestly, I think we weren't supposed to see it. I don't know if it existed. I don't know if it was create, we need to create a unicorn company or if God was just really navigating us down this path of, Hey, go build the company that you'd want to be kind of the whole golden rule. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Or, you know, that concept, it was go create something you would join, something that you could stand by. And it's so interesting when you live your life that way. Like, would I talk to someone like this? Would I want someone to say this to me or do this to me? When you live by that, it's really incredible what can happen in your life. And so we just applied that to the business of building a company and just said, okay, well. God, it's so, it's, it's, <laughs> it's so disturbing because it's like the, it's so insidious, but it's, delivered in this calm, happy, smiling, blonde, faith-based way where it's like it, but it's just the most cruel kind of manipulation that I see going on here where you just do unto others as you would have done unto you. It's biblical. And that's why you'll be a success. There's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with your faith. There's something wrong with your belief in God. If you, if you don't join our company, if you're not having a success, success in multi-level marketing, well, Julie, I've worked very hard to stay away from negativity on my journey with Bravenly. And so I hope God answers your prayers and heals the anger within you that's causing you to lash out so negatively because you obviously have some unresolved pain, and maybe guilt going on inside you. So I hope yeah. that you can resolve that so that you can stop trying to bring others like me down in pursuing our uh, entrepreneurial endeavors. You're right. You know, after a lot of thought, I think um, I did some affirmations. Mm. And I've decided to purchase some additional multi-level marketing coaching. <laughs> See, that, that, that's, the, that's the answer. You, the biggest investment, the best investment you'll ever make is the investment you put into yourself. And the only way out is in. So you got to go it's inwards instead of trying to fight, you know. It's true. Thanks for straightening me out, Marco. <laughs> hey, that'll be $5,000. Exactly. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, what would no we problem. want in product or what <laughs> would we want in comp? And I know we'll visit a little more about that today, but that all started in 2020. Um, in the gap between building in the field and opening Bravenly, I had corporate network marketing experience as well. And that gives you an inside look into strategy, uh, vision, growth, something so much bigger than you can even imagine. But it also gives you inside scoop into maybe areas that you would do a little bit differently um, if you were to build a current relevant company. And so we set out in 2020 to do that and build very organically from the beginning with a handful of friends, just like you would teach a brand new person who joined a network marketing team. You'd say, who do you know? Who do you, you know say, that might be interested in these? Would companies? you say build, build elegantly? What was it? I, I don't know if it was elegantly or organically. Build organically, show up powerfully, recruit meaningfully, connect genuinely. You get me integrity honestly actually typically when people say exactly what you just said they always sign up <laughs> <laughs> no kidding <laughs> products or this business that's exactly what we asked ourselves i love it i love it so much and it's it really is incredible to kind of hear the backstory of where everything came and how everybody brought everybody flew everyone into florida and said okay we're, we're crazy but we're doing this and it's it's <laughs> You know, like just getting to see your dream come true through the process too is really. If you're a Bravenly rep and you're watching this, this is a lie. She didn't just do this. She started another multi-level marketing company and it's called Emris, E-M-R-I-S. And you can search for that. So this isn't just this one off. She already did this and something happened. It's very sketchy. She doesn't want to talk about it. And then she started Bravenly. So this is, this is a fabricated story. I mean, we know this, but. Can you, can you imagine all the people at the Jonestown mass suicide about to drink the cyanide Kool-Aid being like, we're crazy, but we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> we went to Florida, but we're, I mean, we're crazy, but we're doing this. Bottoms up. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> yeah. MTAS says, do you remember when God made a surprise cameo with Jamie Foxx at the Market America event? I do. I was there. I remember that. That was very powerful. Really powerful. This is um, Sherry says the all Can Canada, all Edmonton anti MLM broadcast. And Michelle Carpenter says, Julie, do you need me to start a GoFundMe for what you owe Marco now? Absolutely. That's, where I'm <laughs> <out here chilling. laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, everybody's going to be in debt in this cult eventually. We're flipping <laughs> yeah, it. Right. We're flipping it. Really, really fun to be a part of as well. Um, but I know you mentioned a little bit about the products. And I think that was something that was a really big deal for me as well. Mm -hmm. I have been in the health and wellness space now for nine years, but it's been a huge passion of mine for years and years and years. Um, and so I just needed to know that like, these products were truly going to make that impact. And they were really going to be something that I love is like the experience of the products. You know, mm -hmm. I think that the drinks are such a big part. We look forward to having the drinks every day, um, the cleanliness of the line and, and it, just everything that's put together. It's so well thought out. You can, it's so fucking weird. There's these, it is literally Kool-Aid. It's these powders. And I mean, I, I know it's like, even with Monade, it's fucking weird too, you know, but I don't know what this is about this. Like they say it's been formulated by a naturopathic doctor, like, and they use words like nootropic. Nobody knows what they're talking about. They're all, made it up. it's all the same copy and paste posts with little emojis. Made it up, nootropic. Let me look it up. Also known <laughs> as smart drugs are a diverse group of medicinal substances whose action improves human thinking, learning, and memory. Okay. Some numerous natural semi-synthetic and synthetic molecules that claim that claim to improve organic functions. Cog, sorry, cognitive functions. Okay, so maybe it's made up. Who knows? Yeah. You can tell there's been a lot of thought put mm -hmm. into the development of these products. And so kind of how did you determine who was going to develop the product line and what were some of those most important parts that needed to be within the line? 
Absolutely. Well, we knew we wanted to be in the health and wellness space. That was an area we knew could impact so many people. We asked for referrals in the space. We knew and had some connections already in the areas of formulation, uh, food scientists, formulation scientists, naturopathic doctors. Uh, we asked for, like I said, referrals and connections. And we interviewed, we went through the process of um, just really having conversations about product. It went like this. It's like, Hey, I finally realized the real money is in starting my own MLM. So, you know, like Dave from Sacramento, can you hook me up with him? I want to figure out how to make some powdered Kool-Aid and we'll just like call it something. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Like that's how it went. <laughs> I mean, every, every MLM has a product that either has no overhead costs to them, like being a middleman for insurance policy issuers or, has uh, such a low barrier of entry that it's negligible. Things that are already mass produced on an assembly line that are ready made for you to slap your logo on. Shampoo, powders of some various kinds, uh, jewelry, you know, shit, just cheap crap. So I actually love how on the nose it is though that they're selling Kool-Aid though, because <laughs> For me, I would literally, with my MLM, I actually <laughs> want to come out with a product that is literally just like cult member Kool-Aid. I know I couldn't call it Kool-Aid because that's like a trademark term, but I don't know, cult aid or something like that. I want to, I want to, I think that'd be really, or like snake oil. I want to come out with a drink called snake oil or like an oil that you can put on your skin that like I will work to make it do as little as possible. Like it just <laughs> does nothing. Or it's like a basic lotion, but I say that it does a bunch of other things. <laughs> it changes your mindset. <laughs> yeah, no, it fixes your mood for sure. Because you feel good when you put it on. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Philosophy and innovation and ingredient sourcing, just wanting to make sure that anybody that we worked with um, whether it was, you know, multiple manufacturers like we have now or multiple formulators that they were experts in the areas that we were wanting to create products, that they were watching trends, that they were committed to only sourcing the best raw materials, that they could be along for the ride of innovation and collaboration. You had done a live stream a while ago, and it, when you were mentioning um, just the, the vague terms, like there's so generalization, like we maximize our profits this is the same thing yeah the same thing we're gonna generate a turnover yeah yeah <laughs> like, yeah, yeah it's like right. we gotta source the raw materials only the best quality manufacturers yeah. and referrals like it's not saying anything it's funny <laughs> how easy it is to manipulate language like think about uh i saw an ad a couple years ago for like a watch okay and it was like it's cheap but we use military grade metals now, when you think military grade, you might think, oh, like a tank, like it's durable. But when I think of military grade, I think something that can be mass produced for very cheap uh, to exactly. outfit many different people. You know, how much money are they spending on one soldier? They're trying to minimize that cost constantly. But it sounds good. There's actually a TikTok account. I can't remember. Let me see if I can find him really quick. Um making monster energy healthy. I'm just going to search that. He he has a TikTok where here we go. He has a TikTok where he re he's like a graphic designer and he rebrands different no, known brands and gives them a completely new uh like look, Matt Matt Rosenman. If you want to I'll send you the link to this Julie here in the chat okay. on StreamYard. And if you want to if you want to share this afterwards or like stream this Please, how can I send it to you here? Is there a chat? Maybe, uh, maybe on, maybe on Instagram. <laughs> maybe on Instagram. Oh no, here, private chat. Here we go. There you go. Private chat on the on Streamyard. Oh, at the top. Yeah, you can, so that you can see, he has like a healthy Reese's cup, a healthy Crisco, a healthy um, yeah. Grimace shake. He like this is a great example too of how you can manipulate. Uh, whatever. Do you see this? I see this. I, if I close up, I, I can only share one screen at a time with my um, extreme right. can, 
high level version switch, of StreamYard. Can, can you switch which source you're viewing currently, like without closing the no, tab? No, I have to remove it. I only with a oh. video file, but I could I could share it afterwards. Sure. So sure actually, is there a way I can share it, or I don't have that power? Maybe. Oh, present. Maybe. Yeah, I can present. Share screen. Okay. Um. Okay. Perfect. Share screen. Here we go. This is the screen I want to share. The Matt Rosenman. Am I doing it? I don't see it. It just. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I see it. Yes. Here. You see it. Yeah. Okay. So here, let me show you guys. So we'll watch the one that is uh, here. Healthy. Which one should we watch? Healthy monster. Let's check it out. Monster energy. Aspartame. Sugar. Shit. Let's watch him make it healthy. Rebrand monster to sound like a health food. Yeah, I could do that. We could take the easy route and use the zero sugar monster, but we're going to use the original monster energy drink for this one. And the monster claw logo is absolutely iconic, but unfortunately it doesn't really scream health food. So that's where we're going to start. We're going to keep the M we can still call this monster, but we're going to make it shape more like a heart and a lot softer to make it feel a little bit more like a health food. Now, honestly, I have no idea what the flavor of monster is, but we got to come up with a flavor name. So we're going to go with apple citrus, but we're going to call this sparkle apple citrus so it sounds a little bit healthier and since monster uses natural flavors we can say naturally flavored sparkling apple citrus we'll say real ingredients clean energy we have to put the caffeine on there but we're also going to say rich in b vitamins and with antioxidants and one of the best things i've ever seen on a drink i don't remember what drink it was but it said for the body and the mind that means nothing so we're going to use it and the monster can it's known for pretty much having black and green but i want to add a little bit of yellow to convince the citrus a little bit more and then i'm going to add some imagery of a green apple and lemons and there is our healthy monster energy drink let me know what you think and challenge me with insane right <sighs> he has one where he makes a reese's reese's peanut butter cups a healthier version and everything that he says on the packaging is technically true but it just goes to show how easily manipulatable the uh marketing of stuff is like at starbucks they sell these bags of popcorn and chips but instead of it being a glossy material, it's like matte finish just to make you think it's healthy. Same. Remember when they came out with baked Lay's chips like, a, you know, 20 years ago or whatever, and the packaging was all matte and it's like, it's still chips. <laughs> I, I'm like, I, I remember I'm like, this is good. This is a healthier option because they're baked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they did appear to have less of a, like an oily texture but it's chips chips are chips it's chips it's chips it's, it's chips. chips you you know in your heart that I a did. Chip did not you know you know in your heart chips are not healthy it's true <laughs> michelle carpenter is like boomers in stream yard it, it's just one that's kind of like it but i'm gen x i'm not a fucking boomer, I'm a boomer. <laughs> i'll have i have qualities <laughs> yeah i'm booming <laughs> yeah. Right. but you kids these days don't even know how to use a map so <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to use StreamYard. <laughs> there go. I don't have any excuse. <laughs> and really connecting on what was going to work, but we're also watching the research studies that were out there, the market trends that were out there, that they were FDA registered and GMP certified and um, had, had, had procedures in place where we could pay for additional testing for our raw materials and our products so that we could boldly stand out and say, hey, we stand beside these formulations and the results and that understood that it was more than just a science or a certain ingredient that yes, we wanted the research and yes, we wanted the story and we wanted to know that these were ingredients that worked well together, but we really wanted to make sure that our customers um, and that, that would include obviously brand partners, anyone using the product. Obviously. <laughs> obviously the distributors <laughs> but that's not because it's an internal consumption business where there's no real genuine market it's because our distributors absolutely love the product and most of them started out as customers most of them started out as customers hey you're holding up a image of what of portrait america uh, corporate america right there it's Julie, your that, family marco <laughs> that's what exactly your family is a pyramid scheme so um yeah, you know, our, our distributors, they love the product so much that that's how they started their journey. And they saw the value that this was providing for them. And they became a product of the product. I mean, how many different brands do you know where someone loves the product so much that they become an ambassador of that product? I see people wearing Nike and Adidas all the time. 
but they don't make any money from Nike or Adidas. Imagine Nike or Adidas gave you the opportunity to partner with them and make money off of the things you were already buying. Well, with our business, we have a revolutionary model where you can do exactly that. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> there you go. God called me to it. <laughs> exactly. Products would be able to get a measurable result that would feel better, that it would address the pain points in their life, that they would sleep better, have more energy and notice a difference. And we didn't want to cut corners financially. We weren't looking for just the cheapest raw materials. No, we'd rather pay more to know that, hey, this material, this turmeric, this Garcinia Cambogia, this apple cider vinegar, this is going to give the best result um, and, and not interfere. And we also needed to make sure that as we continue to develop more and more products, that they would work well together. Because we know some people find- Oh my God, she's going to say the word synergist, synergist, syner Fuck, what's the word? Synergistic. Yeah. Yeah. I bet you that's gonna be the word coming. She has said nothing. She has she has not said anything that's made of any substance as that's made any sense. It's just garbled impressiveness. I would have well, been like writing this shit down though. When I was when I was in, I would have thought this was very impressive. It's like only the highest quality ingredients, well, raw materials, trusted sources, you know. Julie. When you are speaking on a God level frequency, it's bound to go over some people's heads because God is above. So maybe that's, you know, don't hate, don't hate just because you don't get it. It's true. I'm a misogynist as well. <laughs> that's true. That is actually true. You hate, you hate to see two women who have risen above the patriarchy and overcome all odds. They have overcome the struggle. You don't know their struggle. They had husbands that were making six figures who had set them up comfortably to raise their kids and chill at home. You don't know what that feels like. That's a, that is difficult. Okay. And you, you as a woman should not be trying to tear down other women. Okay. I really, you should look inwards and try to self audit some of those, uh, some of those defects. I need to, um, I need to do a live video about this and share these three key takeaways. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. And I need to listen to a visualization tape before I go to bed. I need to reprogram my subconscious because this is what's holding me back. I, I always do this. I just am uh, envious because I've uh, been a failed person in multi-level marketing and I just want to lash out and take it out on women. <laughs> That'll be $2,000. Uh, <laughs> Cha-ching! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one product they love at Bravenly, and that's their thing, and that's great. But we also knew that because of the results that these products would give people, that there'd be many people that are on two, three, four, five, six different products. So someone who can really look over the whole line and kind of watch, you know, how these things are going to work together to give the best results and not hold people back. So it's an evolving process. It's a growth process and just being really open to trends, strategies, and ingredients, but not ever compromising at all on your process and on your standards for quality. Ugh, that was so much, so, so many words to just say, we have high quality products. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And the products wow. are like, she's been shilling weight loss supplements and appetite suppressants for at least six years. And okay, well, yeah, wanna, and that is unhealthy and it's fucked up. And it's I don't like want to be accused of being a misogynist for pointing out that she is not exactly the beacon of health and weight loss. She's using her body to try to manipulate other women's bodies and like their feelings about their bellies, their bodies. It, same as Modare. Bravenly is doing the same shit. And when I saw her like posting like some horrible stuff about like when she was with It Works. But then I see people doing the same thing with this bravely. But it's all under that forced, like, veneer, shellacked, smile, fake. Like, where this is really helping helping women. I want to say, <laughs> yes, I'm a mom. I just have no time. I want to just do something good for myself. I want to lose some weight and get in shape. But I'm going to frame it in a way that is empowering women. And any criticism is going to be like, you hate women. You hate women's bodies. And yeah. it's like, this is the shit that's going. I just, oh, it. It just makes me so mad because it does so much damage 
to men and women, but like they're going after women. Oh, absolutely. Uh, that's why I've yet to do a video that was on an, uh, a, a women focused MLM, because I know that's the first and easiest thing you can jump to is saying that uh, I'm a misogynist. As a matter of fact, one of the anti MLM creators after they just after they decided that I was a uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, after they decided that I was that my Trump, uh, I don't know, jokes were were too lighthearted. Um, they on the Instagram called me a wannabe Andrew Tate. It's like, where did that come from? Where did that even come from? Just because like li literally, where did that come from? That was just the first go-to thing. So it's become such a buzzword and such a default. You, you know, these words, misogynist, narcissist, manipulative, all these things are such buzzwords and it, and it works both ways. I mean, you hear a guy, you, you talk to a guy who broke up with his girlfriend. Why'd you break up? She was crazy. Yeah. You, you talk to a girl. Why'd you break up? He was controlling. He was manipulative. And MLMs have their own way of dealing with the uh, people who aren't aligned with them as well. They were a hater. They had limiting beliefs. They had a broke mindset. Yeah. yeah. I've been called that, especially like when I first started speaking out. Now, I shouldn't just say first because it gives the impression that it's somehow like, just disappeared after a week or so but it was over a number of months and it would come in waves and then that's why i had to set boundaries where i'm like i don't engage with any cult apologists because then they would come out and say there's something wrong with you people i don't even have a fucking clue who they are and they'd be like there's something wrong with you you need to seek help you've got to let this go you've talked about this enough it's just yeah it's fucked up it's so uh, totally Totally. And I mean, people just don't know how to use words, you know, calling uh, same with calling th certain things phobic, like phobia means to have a fear of something. I don't know if there's any people out here who are scared of whatever they claim to be a phobic of, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Like being opposed to something doesn't mean you're phobic to yeah. it. Same as, uh, what was the other is another one? Gatekeep is one I've had. I'm Gatekeep. like, oh, I'm not gatekeeping. It's like, it's my fucking opinion. Exactly. I was like, I don't like people that wear like, this is, this isn't like, I don't, I, it's not like I don't like it, but I think it's fucking hilarious that they, they sell Nirvana shirts at Walmart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you own one, it's fine. I just, and of course, like I made a TikTok about this. So I'm just, you know, talking shit. And I had these fucking young men stitch this piece of content. They're like, it's people like you that are gatekeeping music. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Name like three songs. Yeah. yeah, I'm like I don't, and I don't even care if you don't know the songs. I'm just saying I think it's fucking hilarious because when I was growing up, it's just different. It's not a commentary. It's like holy fuck. There's MLMs out there. There are cults out there. There's serious shit out there. Don't be stitching my content on TikTok because I said somebody wearing a Nirvana shirt makes me feel in a certain way. For fuck's sakes. Yeah, <laughs> that's my soapbox. <laughs> Speaking of TikTok, TikTok, there's that trend where it's like POV, but they're using it wrong. Do you know what I mean? Oh, shit. Like, I hope I haven't been guilty of this. <laughs> like, like POV, it should be from your point of view, but they make the videos that say POV, but it's showing the person who is, who would be having the POV. So right. it's like yeah. POV, you're watching your friend, blah, blah, blah. So right. You would think you should be seeing the friend do the thing. Instead, you're watching the person watching their friend do the thing. Anyways, people, I, I think people just don't know how to use words. Yeah, that's, I actually have done that trend, that oh. the incorrect way. But I think that like, on TikTok, it is, that is what. I know, but that's, that's but sort of like. It's, it's backwards. It you're is right. backwards. Yeah. 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 All right. Who else can we piss off in this live? <laughs> Yeah, Michelle says that I'm wrong about the phobic thing because there are more, uh, there's more than one uh, trans uh, definition of the word phobia in different contexts. And in academia, it doesn't imply the fear of something. I can understand that because in science, like the word theory doesn't mean the same thing as it would mean in like uh, literature. Like you have a theory about something. In science, the word theory means like a, an experiment that's ongoing. So maybe I'm wrong about that, but I have never heard anybody actually uh, explain or properly contextualize the word pho phobia or blank phobic uh, in any other means. I, I didn't know. I didn't. I, I up until now, and I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with you because I'm. I'm. I'm saying I don't know. 
Uh, so it, maybe you're right. Maybe that is true. I don't see why you would have a reason to lie. But up until now, I have not heard that uh, there was other meanings to the word. Phobic. You have a growth mindset and you're coachable. So well done. Oh, yeah, I'm being coachable. <laughs> oh, so much. And, you know, I can say just with my experience so far, I have never in the nine years that I've done health and wellness had a customer retention rate that I've had. And that speaks volumes, in my opinion, to the quality of the products. When your customers are coming back month after month after month, and she's only been in the company for eight months. And it's, this is the same thing with Monate. When I first signed up with Monate, it had started in the U S in 2014. I joined in 2017 videos were still being made by market partners and various uplines saying we have a less than 1% return rate. And people would say, I've never had anybody, our customers stay. I still have my VIPs that I've signed up from the beginning. And then that changed. Yep you know that your, your, you know, return rate is just so high, not like turning it back in, mm -hmm. but you have people buying those products month after month. That to me just speaks volumes to what these products are doing and the impact that they're making. I mean, we have whole body health. It is people telling me that it's helping with this. And some people are taking it for this. And I love that we can help just so many health, health ailments that people are dealing with. Um, so another thing that really, really spoke to me when I was looking at everything was really the systems that were in place here. You know, I always call it like a turnkey business. <laughs> That's like my little that. real estate mindset, the turnkey business of what. Isn't that a red flag too? I think that has said something on uh, the FTC. There was some site, they said, watch out if anybody says, oh, it could be in Bravenly's policies and procedures. You're not allowed to say it's a turnkey oh, business. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. Yeah. What you guys have created here is not only do you have systems in place where somebody who's never done this industry before can walk in and have every resource and tool that they need, but then you have it set up for seasoned leaders like myself to be able to have that healthy balance in our organizations where we still can be present for our family. And if we aren't there 24 seven, having to do everything for organization, you guys are doing it for us. So kind of what was your like mindset around creating the systems that are here so that you really could find that equal balance between the newest person and those that are growing large organizations? Right. It's well, first of all, it's something that we put money and energy into before we were even open. And that's pretty rare. There are some companies that do have great field development teams, system support and training, but a lot of times those things are an afterthought. They're a, oh my goodness, we're growing so much. We can't handle the influx of all the questions from the leaders. We've got to do something about it. But it was something that my husband and I, we invested in financially hiring immediately for field development, training and resources. And I think it goes back to number one, my teaching background. I want to know what's the objective here. I want to know what we're doing and how we're going to get from plan A to plan B. So we need to make sure that we have systems and organizations. So that was key right there. The other thing is, is when I started in network marketing 17 years ago as a brand partner, consultant, rep, whatever it's called in any given company, that starter kit came and inside cult member. <laughs> yeah. Part of it was a workbook and I opened the workbook. My sponsor had just started when I did. So it wasn't like I could say, okay, tell me everything, you know, she'd go, well, I'm waiting for my box. Right. And I opened it and I followed a system and I laugh now at some of the things that were in there, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because I did follow the steps and they worked and they were enough to get me going. And I followed people who had systems and knew what they were doing. And then on the corporate side of this industry, but that's also a lie, which can be easily found with just a simple Facebook search, just type in Aspen Emery and uh, it works. All these posts come up. She hasn't deleted anything. And it, it all, says, sorry, what's that? Oh, no, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, that's okay. And uh, she goes on about how she's been really struggling in the business. She's like, she's not been making that much money. And so then that's why she decides to get a job working <laughs> at corporate if it works. <laughs> Well, Julie, the first mistake is going on Google because just because somebody wrote something on the internet, that doesn't make it true. And I've heard Google described as the bathroom wall of the 21st century. Anyone can write anything on Google. Okay. So you're going to believe everything you read on Google, Julie, come on. You're better. You're smarter than that. I'm going to take a Sharpie marker and I'm going to write Primerica is a pyramid scheme on it. And I'm going to do it at the Longview gas station. <laughs> There you go. Well, that's about how as valid as it will ever get. That's right.
<laughs> when I would travel out to events and I would, I would hear from people and they'd say, well, I haven't ever done anything yet. And I'd say, why? Well, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get started. Or they'd say, oh, I recently rejoined. Okay, well, why did you unjoin and rejoin? Well, nobody ever helped me. I didn't know what to do. So all those kind of things mixed together really gave me a heart for, I don't want anyone to ever join our company and not find success and have the reason that they quote for not being successful is we didn't tell them what to do. They didn't have the tools they needed. We all know not everyone is a wild. In the Bravenly um, compensation plan, I actually sent them an email and I asked them, do, the, do you track retail sales? And how do you define retail sales? Do you um, keep a separate list of sales from your brand partners versus your um people on auto ship and your actual retail customers. And they did respond back to me and they said, no, we don't do our retail sales, but there's a mention of our retail sales in this compensation plan video. So I look at this compensation plan video and it's wild. Like at the end, she says, you, at the end of the day, you guys, we give you all the tools. And then she says it in that sing song accusatory tone and all the systems, but it's up to you and how much effort and how much desire you have to work this business. Well, Julie, there are those of us who actually have a burning desire to win and who will <laughs> look at those who have already had the success and put two and two together and use common sense to understand that if we want to have the same results, we got to do the same things. As, they, as a wise man once said, when if nothing changes, nothing changes. And then there are those of us who need to go on Google and look up compensation plans and ask about retail sales. Those people, I'm sorry, they have wasted so much time when they, where they could have been taking massive action on nonsense. And that's why they're down there and we're up here. That's why they say it's lonely at the top because that'll be your, your friends will be doing that. Okay. Your, your mom, your dad, your grandma. That's why it's so important to surround yourself with like-minded people. They say your vibe attracts your tribe. So you already know in your heart that what I'm saying is true, right? So everybody needs to write this down and, uh, you know, come back stronger. And I want you to really leave here today with a fire. Thank you. I want you to leave here today with a fire inside you and really be motivated to go out there and find three people whose lives you can change positively. <laughs> Lead with fire. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Success in network marketing, right? Life happens and some people have ups and downs and maybe don't get started. I'm not saying I don't want anyone, you know, to ever join Bravenly and they're never, you know, there's no one that's ever going to struggle. But I'm just saying I wanted to make sure the reason was never that, oh, my upline left, so I didn't know what to do. It doesn't matter. Okay. We have the, you know, I just have to say, thank you so much, Marco. Like I could have been, I should have scheduled about 20 minutes to feel sorry for myself. And I could have spent the rest of that 20 minutes prospecting people. So again, it was valuable advice. <laughs> and you know, I'm really glad, Julie, that <laughs> you made sure to use that 20 minutes of moping on our paid 30 minute call that you were paying me a thousand dollars for because it shows me that you are willing to let your authenticity bleed through. And when you are sitting down with one of your coaching clients or one of your recruits, that is absolutely key to telling your story. So I couldn't be, I couldn't be more proud of the, of the person you're becoming. And I want you to write this down too. <laughs> be proud of yourself. I wrote proud. <laughs> you feel that? That's that's the frequency. That's that's what it's like when two people are on the same frequency. That's what that means. That's what that feels like, Julie. Really. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to read any of um, some comments? I see uh, uh, Jimmy Bastian is leaving some comments. Stuff Jimmy said there. a funny one. He said, I'm sure millions and millions were invested in a new revolutionary comp plan and structure. Finally, the right company. Exactly. <laughs> Precisely. Dave Vaughn says we need to write Building Fortune Radio's live call in number yes. in, on all the stalls in our area for a good time, for a not good time call, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Peter speaking. <laughs> so Hi, <funny>. Peter speaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Peter. <laughs> he he Hi, Peter here. Peter Ringle is here. 
on building fortunes radio and then he'll like put a period at a weird point in the sentence he's like i had to go it was 1957 and we went <laughs> like stops midway through i give that show a one out of ten marco yeah. <laughs> literally a, a robot like it's like the way stephen hawking would talk through his computer do you have some chips <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> oh goodness Tools and resources so that's kind of speaking to the newbie the flip side of it is is i've been the top leader before and even when i wasn't when i was working corporate or when i was in a different role i spent a lot of time with top leaders and i would see people with the work ethic that was incredible and i'm not talking hustle culture i'm just like these are people who know how to work oh my goodness and they can build relationships and wow I, i'm so inspired by these people, but a thread was they're burnout. They're broken. They're doing it all. They, they don't know how to layer leadership in their team and their organization. And they've become graphic designers in WordSwag and Canva and any new free app they can figure out. And they've become this and they've become that. And they're kind of honorary customer support, like all these things. And I thought, oh, my she's such a fucking bitch for that kind of comment because people really put a lot of time into their content creation. And that's just, that's a low blow. And she knows it. I think the real point she's making here, Julie, is that in the grand scheme of things, <laughs> it's easy to sit back and make little YouTube videos and little thumbnails and hateful little blogs and live streams. It's hard to do what I do, which is go out there in front of people, take action and inspire people and help people retire. So sure, maybe Canva is hard, but in the grand scheme, what I do is for the real hustlers. This is for the people who are committed to becoming the main character in their story. Exactly. Those are really good notes. I want you to save those notes, take a picture of those notes and come and set a reminder in your phone every day, 6.45 p.m. Come back to those every day. I want you to read over those notes every day when you sit down to eat. You could take my notes and then you could sell them and make money off them too. I'm going to sell it back to you after this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. It is so special and unique and rare to find someone who just gets this industry and can go lead thousands. Why are we not softening this experience? Why are we not letting them shine where they can shine and let us do some of the heavy lifting of the resources and customer support and all that doesn't mean that they can't create some really cool team-based things or some fun things because they want to, but can you let us do 98% I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I got to keep pausing this, but this is so bad because it takes away people's creativity and this can lead them to like, critical thinking as well. So they want their, I, I didn't realize this, this is the first time I've heard her speak like this on this, is that that's why they're copying and pasting each other's posts. So they think that that's going to be good marketing, that that's going to attract people to them, but every person in, in Bravenly is saying the same thing. They're using the same images. So they're not, it's, it's so stupid. It's not that they're doing the heavy lifting and every other company does this exact same thing. Monate does the same thing. Well, use our, well, use our graphics. Julie, <laughs> if the formula is not broken, you, why would you try to fix it? Okay. You, there, there's a reason there's mentors and mentees. Okay. That's for a reason <laughs> that didn't happen by accident. It's because the mentors, they had mentors before them and they were taught the plan and they followed the plan. And it's those who follow the plan that will have success. It's when you try to deviate from the plan and do your own thing and start little YouTube channels and Canva and all these little things that you're going to run into roadblocks. And that's God telling you not to ignore his blessings and not to take for granted the tools he's given you, which are your mentors that you pay thousands of dollars for. You know, you're, you're right, because I'm not seeing the results that I want to see. Right. If I was on the right track, I obviously my bank account would be reflecting it. It means I need to invest more into yeah. my business. <laughs> I mean, you need to turn around and look in that mirror behind you. I mean, it says a lot that the mirror is behind you because when the mirror is behind you, you can't look into it. I want to turn around right now and look at that mirror, Julie. See what I mean? Do you feel that? I feel it. Exactly. I need to take some action. <laughs> yeah, that'll be seven thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
of the heavy lifting. And so by creating systems and social library and brand partner graphics and, uh, and ATM groups and just literally a university slash library slash bucket of everything organized, we now have exactly what we need to support brand new people, exactly what we need to support people who are working their way through different levels of leadership and getting more and more committed and excited. But we also have ways where our top leaders can just do the things that, that grow their team, that can do the things that grow their personal business. And so I know that's a long-winded way of saying it, but it is something that it is a long-winded way. I, I'm so <laughs> sick of them already. <laughs> I'm like, I like how them. now she's admitting to doing the long-winded way. The whole fucking thing has been the long-winded. What have I learned so far? I'm a white lady. I'm a white lady. Uh, we're selling some shit. <laughs> exactly. We're halfway through. And they've got like systems in place and it's like every other multi-level marketing company, but they're branding it like it's something really special and different and unique because they have systems and they have their own graphics and they have an ATM group. We, every multi-level marketing company has that. Bravenly is no different. The only thing that I see going on differently with Bravenly, Bravenly that really concerns me is that they have their representatives so brainwashed that many of them post the Bravenly income disclosure statement every time they post and they think it's a good thing. And it shows that 58.21% of their distributors are not make they're not active. They're not making any money. So a lot of them like to say, but people just sign up for the discount. Yeah, because most of those people are fucking customers. Your distributors are paying to become customers. So then they have like 28 or 29% of people are at the lowest rank. And they post this showing it's like anything is possible with this company. They post it and they don't see it. And I'm like, oh my God. Do you, um, I want to see if I can, yeah. Okay. Here, let me, let me really quick. Okay. Good. <laughs> really quickly update this. Hold on. Okay. I need a break from these two. I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> normally I would do like a dance segment break. Has, has anybody done the TikTok dance thing yet? Has that TikTok mean? dance been invented yet? Or to the losing fortunes radio? Oh <laughs> no, track? not yet. The, the, the money's still on the table. Okay, I just found this meme format that I wanted to share with you. And I just really quickly put my own text over it. So I want to share this with you. Okay. This is what I think of. When you when you tell me about the Bravenly ladies uh, sharing the disclosure, thinking like it's a good thing, this is immediately what I think of. This is what I think of anytime I hear an MLM person uh, talk. Hold on. Oh, wait, I got to hold it. I can add it right now. Okay. Here it is. Here you go. This is it. Watch. This MLM is going to make me rich. <laughs> oh, God. And it's the it's, same. It's so it's all it. of it. Or I'm going to be the one to make, I'm going to be the 1% that makes it. God. They all is, believe. This is where, this is how it happens is they know the 99% loss rate, but they all believe they're the 1%. Yeah, I did. I did because I made it make sense. I thought, you know, I've done other things in my life that were people told me that I couldn't do. It doesn't didn't matter that it is it's it has nothing to do with your mindset and your work ethic. It's the structure itself is guaranteed to make you fail. But I believe I'm I'm I see myself. I see me, my little face is right in there with all the other <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Totally, totally. It's uh it's insane. It's insane. I'm glad that you can add this stuff because um, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> All right, I'll get on here. <laughs> it's so missed in this space. And it's something that we're always evolving on. Like our leaders, we collaborate with our leaders when they say, hey, I feel like some our newbies are kind of missing out on this or maybe they're not quite grasping this. Great, we can go create a system for that and resources the leaders don't need to. We will lean into that. So we do not on any way, shape or form think, oh, we've got it together. You know, we've been in 17 years, like we know everything. No, we know what we know and we're confident in that. And that was the foundation. But then Kristen, it's people like you, and I won't name any others because I'll sit here all day naming everybody. People like you, though, that have come in here and, and gone, okay, this is a way to take it even further. And then corporate can lean into that. And we put the oomph and the resources behind it 
to make it happen. And, and what's cool is we're becoming known even in our, you know, two and a half years old, as we'll be here in a couple of weeks, you know, we're considered new and the timing here is incredible. And people are feeling the waves of that early momentum and, oh my goodness, my team's exploding and all of that is happening. Uh, we're, we're definitely just at that stage of growth and it's becoming known in the industry. Oh, bravenly has got it going on. Oh, they got you know what Forbes says the best time to join a company is when it's in like global launch phase or whatever that every multi-level marketing company <laughs> uses that quote and these yeah. guys do too. <laughs> Imagine joining Apple when they were still in the garage. <laughs> they say too, like in all these Bravenly Global Global posts that I see, is that um this company is so new, it's not saturated yet. And that just like you're describing a pyramid scheme like <laughs> fuck yeah wake up please please wake people up. wake up Kristen please wake up Aspen is uh no is exactly what she's doing Kristen I don't think you do I I hope you get up get out one day Thank great you. products they look good they taste good and they're really you know natural healthy incredible products they've got it going on with systems this is a place if I'm out of alignment or I've semi-retired from network marketing, I've got it in me to do it again. If I've got Bravenly on my side, if I know I can, you know, a lot of companies say brand partner or market partner or whatever, it feels like it here. And that's what is so cool is, is our brand partners feel like, okay, I'm in business for myself and I'm going to go do the work, but the company's partnering with me and they're actually on the same page. We're on the same team. Yeah. Oh. I don't think I've ever heard you speak to the systems like that. That was, I mean, and it's so, it's so true. Every word that you said. And I think one thing too, don't miss it. If you're listening is she said that she talks to the leaders. There is so, leaders have a voice here. And I respect that because you guys don't come in and say, well, we've got the years of experience. We've got this. Don't worry. You guys are doing 98% of the heavy lifting, but you're also listening to the field and letting them have a voice as you guys are continuously adding things and, and whatnot. And she's checking her. She's like, not listening. She's like looking at she's Oh, <laughs> she's like, she's like messaging the next person that she has to do a zoom with. Exactly. She's messaging fucking Ray. She's like, Oh, Hey, I got someone on here. Maybe she can get into your inner circle coaching. Yeah, another one bites the dust. Exactly. She has a broke mindset. She's, she's ready. <laughs> I'll get a 15% cut if I get her in. Right. He's like, yeah. Ray's yeah. sitting there licking his fingers. Ooh, yes. Mm. He's just going like this. Smell fart smelling face. Oh, yeah. He's like, <laughs> Ray Higdon is such a dork. Yeah, it's taken a dark turn too. It's like I need to have some um lightness in this. A anytime you're talking about multi-level marketing, it gets so heavy, it's hard to get the humor, but it, it helps to talk about this. Yeah. And you know, one of my favorite things when we launch a newest brand partner is I share my screen with them on a Zoom and I walk them through yep. all of those resources and, and their eyes just bug out like, <laughs> oh, this is really all here. The trainings are done every week. Everything's put into place. And, and, and then for me, that doesn't mean I walk away from my, my brand partners and I'm done. It means it takes that pressure off of me to say, you've got every resource that you need. My inbox is wide open when you need me and I'm going to be here to hold your hand, but look how much you have. It's just... It really is amazing to see um, how those systems work here. And I think you said something about disrupting the industry. People are watching now, and I'm going to kind of talk onto the compensation a little. I think people kind of started looking a little seriously um, recently when Business for Home came out and shared how much your compensation plan really mm -hmm. does be the field. You know, I think so often people want to look at a compensation plan, and it needs to make sense to them, and it needs to be this easy page read, and it needs to be this certain way. But that's just a distraction from the truth of how much is this compensation plan really paying to the field? That's honestly the most important part to me of a compensation plan. And I was so grateful when I was asking all the leaders when I was joining, they were showing me numbers of how much people were making and everything. And that's that's what meant more to me. That, this part I had also like fast forwarded and I happened to land on it when I was picking this video for us to react to. And I couldn't fucking believe where she's like, it doesn't make any sense. I just, it's the, the truth. And I want to know how much it's paying out. And she completely missed it. It's just so weird to hear her say that. If I didn't laugh, I would cry, as they say. Yeah. yeah. Be the understanding 
what the compensation was. And so I think it's amazing is you guys are paying out the highest that I have found so far to the field. They don't actually pay out at all. And I'm like, I was looking at Bravenly Global, the way she said market partners, that's Mon8. And then she says brand partner. It's the same. It's very similar to Mon8's compensation plan. Totally. But Mon8 pays out better. They pay um, 30% to their retail customers. Bravenly doesn't. Bravenly pays out less than that. And I'm like, this isn't any better at all. It, but I mean, it's all about recruitment anyway. They have something called clubs. And it's based on, you could just purchase your rank. So 400 PV is like the 400 club. 1200 PV is the 1200 club. So I noticed when there was that great plexitis happening, all these people that had moved over from June 1st to Bravenly, all of a sudden they have their team ranking up and their Facebook feed is filled with all these congratulations, 1200 club, 800 club, 400 club. It's like they just move their entire downline over there. Absolutely insane. And I absolutely love that. And, and another thing that I love about the compensation is it's a get in where you fit in comp plan. It is, you can come in and <laughs> what just does it mean? Made it up. Products. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just get in where you fit in, which is going to be at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You can come in and you can grow an organization. You can come in and you can develop leaders. However you want to fit into this compensation plan, you can earn income that way. And so kind of like, I, you know, backing up a little, you also say like, you were working with these product developers. You're working with specialists in the systems. You're working with specialists in compensation. I love that you have pulled in these extra resources and not tried to say, I'll do this all by myself. Right. <laughs> you sought out, I need help from people who are know these things. And I know that that's what you did with this compensation plan. So kind of like walk us through what that development was like and why you decided to go the way that you did with this compensation plan. Well, their compensation plan, I'm going to be um, reporting to Competition Bureau Canada and FTC. And I'm going to just fire it off to Tina.org too, because it violates like that two-pronged Coscott pyramid scheme test. And also the Competition Act section 55.1 in Canada, you only have to meet one of the requirements for it to be considered a pyramid scheme selling plan. And, and you have to pay in order to have the right to sell products. It's like right away, it says it right in there. You have to pay in order to get a commission even from Ravenly. It's really it's no all right there. Shit. What is it? 55.1? 55.1. I've got my, you know, they, on the other side of my notes, you know, to reprogram myself, I have my, this is, I'm like one step away from putting it all together on the wall with yarn right. <laughs> as I plan out my Bravenly video. Well, so, Julie, <laughs> instead of reporting these companies and hating on them, maybe you should just find something better to do with your time. That's what I was going to say, but <laughs> go ahead. Oh, shit. So I, I have my, um, you know what? I can, I can pull this up. I can just read it. I don't, um, I'm not savvy enough yet to put it up on the computer, but I have, <laughs> Where is this? Oh, shit. Regulations. This is where it is. Because it's worded slightly differently, you know, in the States versus Canada. But this is yeah. what it says for Canada. Definition of a pyramid scheme. So Section 55.1 of the Act defines a scheme of pyramid selling as an MLM plan with one or more of the following features. And this one right away requires a payment for the right to receive compensation for recruiting others into the MLM plan compensation for recruitment. And the second one that Bravenly does and every MLM does requires purchases as a condition of participation, other than a specified amount of product at the seller's cost for the purpose of facilitating sales. Bravenly's compensation plan, you have to have a minimum, I think it's a hundred PV in order to get paid. And that, and it's not for the purpose of facilitating sales. It's like, you can just make, you can just purchase your own purchases and and you have to have that in order to get paid. Are these women in Canada? These two women we're watching now? I don't think so. I think they're in the U.S. Is Bravenly in Canada, though? Yeah, they are. Huh, hold on. I'm looking at this right now that you told me. Uh, defines pyramid scheme. A scheme of pyramid selling. Weird. As an MLM plan with one or more of the following features. Requires payment for the right to receive compensation. Well, that's all of them. So check. Yeah. Requires purchase purchases as a condition of participation well check that's all of them includes inventory loading with one or more of the following features yeah. very interesting wording includes inventory loading or 
lacks a buyback guarantee on reasonable. That's more gray. But those first two are ironclad among any yeah. MLM. On any MLM. And I like where it says it is a criminal offense to establish, operate, advertise, or promote a scheme of pyramid selling. Ooh, and, this yeah. is helpful. I'm going to cite this 55.1 later today when I, uh, you know, I have this video coming out. I can't say when it's coming out. It could be in a week. It could be in a month. It could be tomorrow morning. Um, and uh, I, I'm yet to make my actual formal report to the FTC, SEC, and Competition Bureau. So this is helpful for me. I'm going to cite this 55.1 of the Competition Act in my Primerica report because uh, it's a certainty that they do charge uh, a fee to join the opportunity. Yeah. And you know what else too? I don't know. Um, you know, when you were doing like Jay Noland and that success by health uh, mm -hmm. pyramid scheme, oh, there yeah. was this article and it was written by this uh, law firm that is, if you, if you look success by health, Noland FTC or pyramid scheme I've it seen comes that. Up right away. And they said that they used, f so they didn't, the success by health didn't object to the first prong of the cost caught pyramid scheme test, the, the paying for the right to sell products or whatever, but they tried to object to the second one, which is paying for the right to like receive rewards unrelated to the sale of products, the recruitment. And then they said they had six additional things like the court found to bolster that this is a pyramid scheme. So what I'm doing for this Bravenly video is I took like what the success by health, this federal judge in Arizona said, and I'm going to like show some of what Bravenly does, but it's quite obvious. And this is for any multi-level marketing company, like it's for Primerica for anything. Like the um, one of them is you can't sell anything. Well, this isn't Primerica, but you can't sell anything on Amazon or eBay because. And they said that is going inhibiting people's um, their ability to. Here it is. SBH focused primarily on recruiting and very little on retail sales to consumers. Notably, the court held that SBH inhibited retail sales by prohibiting affiliates from selling via outlets such as Amazon and eBay and by barring affiliates from selling products below the suggested retail price. That is verbatim, almost, in Bravenly Global's policies and procedures. You can't sell below the suggested retail price. You cannot sell on Amazon and eBay. But does Bravenly sell on eBay or Amazon? Nope. And they say that you, you can't. And so but that's what... Am I misinterpreting this? Well, th those are the rules for the distributors. But like, for example, Monet, if you go on Amazon and you search Monet, you can buy Monet products from an official Monet page on Amazon. So the distributors aren't allowed to do it, but the company is allowed to actively undercut their own distributors by doing it. So I wonder if I search Bravenly powder on Amazon, if I'll find anything. Uh, I'm not sure if this is this... If uh, what what are what are their products called? Do they have a Bravenly logo Rush. on them? There's like one is like it's called Rush or Grape Rush or Extreme. Yeah, I don't see Bravenly on here, but I think it's so new. But yeah, but, but that's for the U.S., right? You said that was the Success by yes. Health FTC yeah. thing. So Canada will be different, right? Because we don't have the FTC here; we have the Competition yeah. Bureau. So I honestly think there's really no excuse for Canada because. At least in the U.S., the FTC, they can say, you know, we don't have enough staff. And I think people really don't understand generally how much more populated the U.S. is than Canada. In just the state of California, there are more people than all of the country of Canada in one of those 52 states. So you have to consider that even though the land mass on the map is similar, it's night and day in terms of population density, which is why I'm so perplexed by why Canada has such a hard time uh, seemingly shutting down pyramid schemes. What the hell else do y'all have going on? <laughs> Not like you busy. <laughs> Insane. Right. It was one of my favorite parts and it started very basic. It started with a pen and a paper and go and kind of making not quite a pros cons list, but a things I will never put in a comp plan because I've lived it and I don't like it. And it, it created the wrong habits in my organization. It had people 
moving and doing things and giving up things and making decisions that weren't right for them, weren't right for other people, not because they were bad people, but it was like, oh, the math and the way that this is doing this is causing us to need to do things. And oh, fuck. I have to tell you this too, Marco. Um, Bravenly Global's comp plan is the fucking five by five by five. You can't even make this shit up. And they stop at level four and they just like, and they have it like you at the top. And it's just like, you have five, five. And they have even like 25, 125 written in little numbers on their bodies. I'm like, I can't even, they're so bold. Insane. Yeah. <laughs> Insane. In order to just get a, a basic paycheck. So there was the whole, no, not even open to these ideas. Cause I've lived it. I've watched it. I've seen it. And it's not great. The second part was, what are things that I've seen before or, or earned before that I was like, oh, that made me want to do more of the right things. That was great. That was rewarding for not just me as a leader, but my team, they, they won with that. And that was helpful. And then there were, what are some things I wish we could do? How does it feel? Because yes, there's math. We walked in day one and said, hey, we know what regardless of what everybody's trying to say they pay out we know that there's a lot of marketing with oh it's this percent of bvcv divided by two all this stuff we know what the numbers are and we said hey dollar for dollar let's just talk in normal people talk here's what we want to pay out like we need to just get this money back out there these are the ones that are out there you know doing the do right they're the ones out there sharing and sharing and talking and building the network of consumers of our great products and 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 in talking to the people and helping retain customers so right away number one you start with the end goal in mind of getting more money back out there right like that's just the easy part but then it was also how do you just you know disperse that money because you could only split a dollar so many ways if a company says they pay out 200 percent that means they pay everything out and then they go find money on the money tree. And like, no, we know how it works. And so we said, we're going to reward top leaders because we know what, what effort comes into building and retaining and growing and supporting a team. We're going to reward all the people in the middle somewhere that are looking to make, you know, 500, 600, 800, 2000, all those people in the middle. Like we have to have this strong component. We also need to make sure brand new people who are not really necessarily uh, someone with a lot of experience. It's the same shit. Like this is I don't it's so bad. I know. It's we so mind numbingly fucking boring <laughs> that if I, if I wasn't live streaming and like making content out of this right now, I would never, you could never pay me to watch. Well, you could pay me to watch it, but I would never be watching it for any reason. Literally. I know. And, and yet this, I think there's something about this, like you said, mind numbing. Cause this, this is just one video. It's only 36 minutes. And this is shit that people watch every day. And if you're in like a coaching group, like rank makers, we'd be taking in additional. So it could be like hours of footage like this every day. And that's not counting going on, making your own live videos, selling shit in your team, prospecting people like this day in and day out. I can't even believe I took that's the point making, making you bang your head against the wall until you just roll over and take it. I mean, in Steve <laughs> Hassan's books, Combating cult mind control and freedom of mind, he gives a, a recount of his uh, experience with the Mooney's cult. And in it, yeah, there you go. There you go. Oh, yeah. Actually, I gave away, I think I gave away my physical copy of Combating Cult Mind Control, but I have the Freedom of Mind book over in my room and I have the audiobook of uh, Combating Cult Mind Control. But in it, he talks about how, like, the first weekend getaway he went to for this Mooney's retreat was just, it went to like six in the morning of chanting and singing and speeches and you're sitting on the floor so you can't quite get comfortable and every time you start to doze off they say pay attention wake up and it's like literally russian sleep experiment you know they want you to they this is it's it's all about numbing your mind you know yeah this is painful painful but i think it's i think there is um there's value <laughs> in getting this out there just to more and more people are starting to wake up. They come across anti MLM content and it's just, it, and they start to, they start to binge watch it because it's what happened with me. And I've spoken with other people who are just starting to leave rank makers now mm -hmm. starts, they start to take in other people's content and they start seeing, you don't know like what, 
you might say what I might say, what somebody in the comments might say, it's just like, oh, that's how I feel. Oh my God, I never thought of it that way. So we're doing, um, we're doing God's work here. <laughs> I was reacting to this video. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck that's God. why I, sometimes I, when I react to these, I put them on 1.2 speed or 1.5 speed. I really should. I could do that now. Oh, I you think could. I can. You oh, could, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I do really it. should on that. All right. Let's do that. I could go to two. Mm, that might be too fast. Okay. What do you think? 1.5 1. 1. or 1. 5. Okay. Yeah. So maybe they don't want to go to the top and they're looking for three, four, five, six hundred bucks a month. We need to make sure they can do that. And we also need to make sure that if you don't want to build a team, you can build a great income with customers. And of course, there's no guarantees on income, right? People got to get in and get to work. You know, it's not a get rich quick. If you sign up and buy a kit and never talk to anyone, you'll make zero dollars, all transparency, okay? It's about products being sold and moving. So we wanted that. So the math was that part, right? It's like, oh, we'll put more money in and here's how we want it dispersed and here's what's cool and here, yeah. But then there's a the psychology. And a lot of times you don't know that if you haven't built in the field before, it's how does it feel when somebody hits a rank? Oh, it's exciting and it's this and they share. Okay, well, let's make sure when that happens, we've got some money in there for them. Okay, well then what happens after that for a lot of people? Uh, well, in the subsequent months, they take time off sometimes because they've arrived. So what if we put in some additional? This is something really sneaky that I wanna point out because we were taught this in multi-level marketing and, and also in rank makers is that you hit a rank and it's your fault when you don't maintain that rank because you know, you've know you arrived. You've just take a step back and it's not, it's because it's built in, like you're going to be failing people. That's the churn rate. That's what's happening. But it's happening at a scale that you're not really aware of yet until you get higher up. The people can start seeing that more and more. It's funny how she just like embeds this shit in there. It's insane. It's insanity. What we're listening to. Yeah. Well, bonuses in the subsequent months that allow them to go, Oh, if I do that again and I do that again, I do that again. And then what happens after three, four, five months of this is it became a habit. And their team has grown. The other thing psychologically we know is that sometimes people hit a rank and I can't wait to see if your audience can relate. If they're network marketers, they hit a rank and they've given it everything they've gotten. They push so hard. They hit a volume. Maybe they hit 10,000 in volume, right? That's incredible. Maybe they hit 4,000, whatever the number is. And then sometimes the next month you're still working hard. You're growing or you're doing a little rebuilding, but sometimes your volume is just a little bit less than it was the month before. I mean, let's be real. If you're in a company for 10 years, you know, there's not 120 ranks how to do the math 10 times 12 months there's not 120 ranks i mean there's a lot of months when you're working but you may not be hitting a rank well what if your volume dips a little bit so we made sure that our maintenance as people were promoting was a little bit less volume okay in most cases about 20 percent less and so they aren't losing those ranks and they're still paid at that and you know what that does for morale and that is just a snapshot obviously we're not going to go through comp plan 101 here people love it they join they just get started and they see it you know, we have a great income disclosure that is literally data just pulled exactly from our system saying, what are people making? It's really just about getting started. But those are some of the things. It was, what have we seen before we'll never do? What have we seen before that we would love to have? And what are some ways that we can work with the field and just our natural human psychology of this business and, and being in the right mindset? So at first glance, you know, you see the percentages and the numbers and levels and all that. When you see that it's levels and there's enrollment levels that could be further as you are able to strategically place people. And then on top of all that, there's generational pay that could be 10, 20, 30 levels and deep in your organization, depending on how you strategically move people around. People that, that dig in and take the time to look past just that surface glance and go, well, let me look at this a little more. They love what they see. Obviously, if they're building it and, and thriving, growing in it, they, they love what they're getting paid. But once they take the time to kind of understand. <laughs> Jimmy has a great comment. He said, I don't know if you've seen the show Ozark on Netflix. Yes. Uh, Jimmy said, I just rewatched Ozark recently. The part where they torture Marty Bird in a dungeon and blast metal music all day long. <laughs> this could be what the cartels use. So funny. Send in Kristen and, and Aspen. <laughs> I know. Our, our, our compensation plan, it's complicated, but it's, um, it's Your very straightforward. People complication that love plan. <laughs> the complication plan. They're, They're like, let me out. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Yeah. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> exactly. Kill me. I'll tell you where I buried the gold. <laughs> I'm a piece of shit. I deserve to die. <laughs> Make her as... stop. I can't take the Brave of League rush anymore. <laughs> soon as soon as I heard the names, like if I was sitting in the dungeon and two women came in and they told me their names were Aspen and Kristen, I'd immediately be like, oh no. Like I don't <laughs> already know. No, no, yeah, you're kind of like there. It's like the um, you know, hanging like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ground and you're just like you have like, okay. she's like beaten up and you're like i got it you're making all those sarcastic comments because you can take it and then aspen comes in with her like and then kirsten with her kindness sign in the crucifix no. hi marco 
I'm hanging, I'm hanging, I'm hanging like this. I'm hanging like this with no shirt, no clothes. I haven't eaten in three days. They just come in like God sent us. I'm like, no. I'm like slowly spinning around, you know. Yeah, exactly. Like, please, please, I'll do anything. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so fucking funny. Basically. I can, I can vis envision this, though. This is the thing. <laughs> totally. This is what Primerica can, too. It's like, that's a good fucking idea. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> In a level concept, and they un unfold or peel back some of the layers. You're like, wow, there's more here than I thought at just a passing glance. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I feel every time I think, you know, integrity is what you are building this business on. And this compensation plan is just jammed back with integrity because you can tell and from someone who's built in different compensation plans, you can tell you found those I gotchas in comp plans and you were not allowing that here. I mean, just the fact that your maintenance bonus drops the volume that you need because you don't want money to be left on the table. Right. You don't have to come out swinging and have to hit something within 15 to 30 days. I mean, if you don't, you lose out on all this money. Like you want to give people that time right. to be able to earn those things. And, and there's just so many little things. Again, I could talk on that compensation plan forever. You know, it's funny. I was saying it was a few months ago. Um, you guys update. Fuck, please don't. <laughs> they, just, they, just, they just never let up from their like nice, you know, uh, demeanor. <laughs> I'm like hanging there day six. I'm like, you fucking bitch. Kill you. <laughs> they kill you. <laughs> it's sitting there. They bring you the grape rush. You drink it because you're so thirsty. You haven't drank anything. You're like, you feel a bit better. They're like, we told you, you have a little bit more energy, don't you? <laughs> you're trying they to like swim away. <laughs> they starve me so that I have to drink the fucking Kool-Aid. They like, cut you down. You're just like in the chair and you're like, they force you. There's no gun to your head. There's no gun to your head. I'm just yeah. saying. And you're just, how do you like it? It made me feel better. And then they put you back up. <laughs> I'm like, just give me, I'm like, don't put the powder in. Just give me water. They're like, Shh. <laughs> stirring it up. Oh God. I'm like, no, not cherry. <laughs> not cherry. <laughs> not cherry, please. Put grape. <laughs> They're like, this isn't Kool-Aid. Yeah. This is Ravenly. <laughs> They're like, you will be a product of the product, whether you like it or not. <laughs> oh, man. That was good. <laughs> We're almost done here. Six more minutes. In the compensation plan, unbelievably beautifully, there was this massive update in the compensation plan where you were going to be able to get paid way more. <laughs> but guys, this is how humble Aspen is. There was no, oh, huge announcement. All of it. There was puts, no like, oh, all these right, things going Julie, on. It was just like. <laughs> at, uh, Johnny's comment. It puts the powder in the mouth. It puts the powder in the water. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god odd says don't make us get the syringe drink motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> they like force it up my nose like you know how the inmates at rikers island with the fucking they have to force feed them the little pills because they 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 uh they stop eating as like a way to go on strike so they force the shit up their nose <laughs> they give me an enema a bravenly grape powder enema <laughs> Oh God! Oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Oh hey guys, by the way, we just updated the compensation plan. Just wanted to let y'all know you're gonna make more money. <laughs> we were like, what you, what you said? Like, it was just so casually put out there, and it just shows like you you have so many amazing things in the company that you don't have to go out there and be like, oh look at that. You know, you don't have to be all flashing all this because you know. What you so I just have to say this too. With these two, Aspen gets people to write copy and pasted posts about her and one of the most recent ones that was going around because every every couple of days I go on Facebook and I just type in Bravenly Global and I see what people are writing and they're like Aspen Emery is the, voted the number one network marketer female professional in some random weird yeah. whatever what you know but it's the same post and it's from her <laughs> she said, yeah she set it up the the best thing is creating your own organization and then giving yourself an award from that organization that's exactly it. <laughs> She's the number one. Yeah. Move over, Jesse Lee. Aspen is here. Yeah. Yeah. Aspen with her smile. <laughs> Jesse Lee is, yeah. <laughs> She'll hang you up. And she'll make you drink. <laughs> Jesse Lee is too busy on the balcony. Sun, what's it called? Sun gazing, where she like, like lays naked on her side. Uh, and like, su what's it called? She's like, like tanning her butthole. Is that really a thing? Yeah, she's posted about that. 
where she like sunning, sunning. I think it's called sunning your butthole. <laughs> Aspen and Raven. I'm like, I'm like hanging there. They're like, <laughs> and now they open a window. I haven't seen light in three weeks. I'm like, ah. They're like, no, no, not your face. They turn me. I'm like, no. Yeah, we all were just so blown away that you added that update. And we just kind of said like, what, what just happened? Like, we're not used to this. Like, it just happened out of nowhere organically. And so, so I have one last question because you guys, they're watching you guys see like what we have right now. I mean, if you are not excited and jumping for joy, like, whoa, <laughs> this is amazing. And you're not ready to message someone and be like, I need to know more. I would love to just go a little bit further and ask them to let us, you know, she's talked about past and the present, but I would love to kind of hear a little bit about like your projections and your vision for the future of Brave Year. Right. Absolutely. Well, right now, one of the things that is true and that continues to be true and will be true even bigger in the future is that we are a, a light. We are a light in this industry and we are kind of that whole, you know, people kind of sorting through all the options and they're seeing straight ahead, but there's this lighthouse there. And it's like, oh my gosh, that's where I'm going. That's what I'm looking towards. And so even bigger than where we're at now is just continuing to be that company that stands out, that doesn't get pulled into some of the other discussions and situations that may be happening um, in this industry that stays innovative, um, that still stays true to loving this network marketing industry, but also leans into some of these other things that are, are happening in our space, continues to be an innovator with products, additional compensation, um, because we're a hybrid remote cloud-based company and do our own fulfillment and, and have our handprints on so many things here. It's a holy fuck buzzword, even at two speed, I can't even make it go in. Made it up. Oh, it's at one and a half. I can go two speed. Go ahead. I'm going. I just want to get the end of this fucking thing. <laughs> this is like when I would grace and the people would be like, you're almost there. It's like, I hate when people would say that because you're never almost there. It's like, if I'm a hundred meters away, you can say it, but then I can see the fucking finish line. But if it's like two kilometers, it's like, that's still too many. I don't know where I'm going with this, but I've lost my mind right now. <laughs> yeah allowing us to expand and grow in ways that some, some companies just aren't able to, even if they want to. Um, so that keeps us free. Our name is Bravenly Global and we're leaning into the global as we're internationally expanding um, in the coming weeks, months, years. And so that's a big part of our vision. We've got great products already in the works and part of the strategic plan to continue to round out our lifestyle brand with incredible products. Uh, we're already on target. We've already surpassed in the first part of the year what we did the whole year last year. So we're on target to just continue a wild growth. And in a, in a, in a time in our existence and economy in these early 2020s, uh, we're that company that's standing true and seeing that growth continue to happen. And we're also not going to worry or compare ourselves to what other people say isn't possible in the wellness network marketing industry anymore. Well, just it may not be possible for them doesn't mean it's not possible and happening right here as we speak at Bravenly. So new products, additional compensation, have our first incentive trip coming up in 12 days or maybe less than that now. Uh, incentive trip, more to come, mastermind retreats with leaders, conferences, conventions, regional events, Bravenly on the road. We're not stopping and we're shattering so many misconceptions about this industry and so many things that people think you have to do in order to stay um, profitable and all of this. And we're, we're shattering a lot of that. And I continually say, and I have for two and a half years, we're waving our Bravenly flag. If you haven't heard of us yet, you're going to, we will be a household name. Our map that we every once in a while put out there reflects growth in every single market within the United States. And it will be not too long before people go, oh yeah, Ravenly, I've been on those products for three months. They're great. Ravenly, yep, I'm in their groups. Yep, oh, I'm doing this and doing that. We will be that company and we will have a story. But it's because of the leaders and the newbies and everybody in between, they're seeing something so refreshing that they don't want to miss out on being a part of it before everybody else is already a part of it. This is a chance to be a part of it before anyone in their market, in their neighborhood, at their church, at their work knows about this company. Um, I'm so glad you took the time, Kristen, to just you saw it pop up somewhere. You're like, I got to deep dive into it. Because in a sea of so many different posts on social media about this company and that company, and everybody's got their pretty drink in a water bottle and their reels and TikToks and all that, it's hard to kind of figure out what the differences are. That's why people need to just pause for a minute deep dive, take a peek at Ravenly first. And if you want to move on, that's okay. But I have a feeling that what you'll see is what people like Kristen have seen. But hey, this isn't just another post. This isn't just another thing that you've maybe done before. This might be- Did she, she say cult? Place where you want to plant your roots and give this up. <laughs> Did she say this isn't another cult? Oh, I don't know. Go Here. back five seconds. Just, just okay. press the left arrow. Go back five okay. seconds. Everybody's got their pretty drink in a water bottle and their reels and TikToks and all that. It's hard to kind of figure out what the differences are. That's why people need to just pause for a minute. Look, deep dive, take a peek at Bravenly first. And if you want to move on, that's okay. But I have a feeling that what you'll see. Did I miss it? No, just keep playing, but go 1.5 again. You went too okay. far back, but just go okay. 1.5 again. Okay. There you go. People like Kristen have seen, but hey, this isn't just another post. This isn't just another thing that you've maybe done before. This might be the thing and that place where you want to plant your roots and give this an honest shot over the next 12 months and just see what happens okay. and not have this. Oh, it wasn't the cult. I thought you like said. Thing. <laughs> that would have been awesome. <laughs> For real. Be something you look back in two or three years ago, man, I saw that live on her page when they were a brand new company, just getting their, getting their first waves of momentum. Um, I know it's just so many times in life. We feel like we've missed the boat and this is a chance where people don't have to miss the boat. They can get in it right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sign me up again, please. <laughs> <Here>. <laughs> 
Well, thank you so much, Aspen. I can say so much of that, but I'm just going to finish it on that because, I mean, really, this is just such an incredible time. You know? Oh, fuck. I can't take it. It's done. It's close enough. That's... Uh. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> Please, just stop it. I'll, I'll admit it. I have limiting beliefs. I have a broke mindset. I'll do anything. <sighs> yeah, that was a lot. It's funny because it's like something that it's just, it's so monotonous, but you can see how much energy it takes to get mm -hmm. through one of these fucking things. It's so crazy. Insane. All right. Literally insane. Yeah. Type oh. zero says, can we slow it down just a little? <laughs> we you slowed it down so much at stop now. Thank you so much for being on here and reacting. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> oh my God. That'll be $12,000, Julie. That I was know. Exactly. That was like two hours. That was like one hour, 54 minutes. How long do you normally stream for? Sometimes it depends. I sometimes like to go like do these five hour uh, live streams and just react to something and keep pausing it and read all the comments. Right. It's funny how fast time goes. <laughs> I know. Trust me. I know. I've done five hour streams, seven hour streams. I've done seven hour streams. I've done a 24 hour stream before. Did you stay awake or did you sleep? I went to all? sleep. I went to sleep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I went to bed. Did you have the camera on you while you're sleeping? Uh, yeah, but then it died after a little bit. So I had to like, when I woke up, I plugged it in, turned it back on. So yeah. huh. that was yeah. awesome. Tomorrow, yeah. uh, I'm going to be on a live stream with Pocket Watch and with JT. I think his channel is called JT Pocket Watcher, or maybe that's his Instagram. If you search, let me see, Pocket Watching with JT. You can okay, show it. Huh? You can show it and even drop the link if you want. Oh, let me just show it so you know what to look for real quick. Um, share screen. Here we go. So tomorrow, can you see this? Yeah. So this is the channel. And then you can see he already has the thumbnail scheduled for tomorrow, 7 p.m. Uh, I believe that's 7 p.m. Yeah, my time zone. So my normal stream time. So we'll be on there uh, with JT. Great guy. Great channel. Talks about finance, scams, etc. And uh, what else? Um, what what was the other thing? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to post the link. You you can find it. I'll, I'll post it in Discord tomorrow when we go live. And then uh, also keep an eye on your subscription feed tomorrow afternoon. All right. That sounds exciting. Yeah. yeah. Can we have some air horn, Marco, please? Oh, please. Yes, of course. <laughs> Oh, yeah, let me turn it out. It's not, uh, not loud enough. Come on, let me start over. Marco! 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 There you go. Uh, thank you. That's Julie, awesome. pl plug some stuff, Julie. What does that mean? You have any plugs? I don't get it. Like, think anything to promote. Oh, <laughs> no, I don't. Like a shameless plug. Um, okay, my shameless plug is um, if you haven't subscribed to Marco's channel yet, please consider doing it. A lot of people that follow my content um, have the same kind of sense of humor as I do. You probably really like his stuff. And I consider supporting him. Like if you watch one of his live streams, it's really funny. It's really easy. You can like um, help support his channel, help support his work. And you can even purchase uh, Ponzi-nomics. He has like affiliate links through through that. So that is going to be my shameless plug. And that is all you're going to get from me. <laughs> I'm going to ask the same. But for, for Julie, I'm going to ask you guys, sub subscribe to Julie and support Julie. How do you? How can people support you? Are you still not accepting money? I, yeah, I have issues around that. So uh, it's, it's my limiting beliefs. You know, that's why I hired my coach. And I know well, I've got to action and i've already failed once you know it, hugely it, but it, i'm here i am i'm i'm coachable <laughs> go look at julie's channel you guys she posts a lot and if you follow her on tiktok you've got a big tiktok following she is one of the most consistent people when it comes to like uploading shorts tiktoks lives uh videos you name it like it's really incredible to see that you've taken i mean you're probably not posting as much as when you were in MLM, I'm guessing, because that was like a, a full time job. But yeah. to see yeah. that you're flipping it and not doing what most people do when they leave MLM, which is just disappearing and acting like it never happened, to see that you're actually taking this time to um, help people is really, really incredible. And uh, I would say if you guys want to support Julie, just send me the money and I'll, I'll hold on to it for her. 
That's, you know, actually, uh, my my big passion here, my big my one big main thing is to really help support rank makers as they start to wake up and leave. Oh, it's yeah. really serious. Like Ray Higdon is calling himself a prophet. He has said in other videos that end times are coming 2028. This whole thing is really surreal to me. I think it's it's fucking crazy. I don't know what other, what other words to describe it. I've talked to other rank makers that are like, they, it, that has been the thing that has woken them up. But many of them are driven even deeper in because their faith is tied so tightly with this man. Right. And right. Um, if you are, if you know anybody that is in rank makers or as they start to wake up, uh, just please support them. Please show them the kindness um, that you have shown me and understanding as I've been begun healing and speaking out. I was really defensive um, and misinterpreting a lot of kindness shown to me. Um, and a lot of people within anti MLM, they, they understood that it's like, you kind of already know that. So I, I would just ask that you to, to do that as well. Get you one of those kindness signs that Kristen had behind. Oh yeah. Instead of this one, this is my, this is what, this is my problem. Yeah. Love that. Fuck your kindness. <laughs> well, that was fun. Thank you for having me, Julie. And thank you so much for what you do and for the support as well. And, um, we will definitely do this again, of course. All right, sounds good. Thank you so much, Marco. Yeah. Peace out. <laughs> See you later. Bye.